All right, so we're um, on the Fisher here, 875A. There it was, uh, in case you didn't see the other video. Uh, it was pretty nice. And it still could be. What I did was, I did some thinking, and I showed pictures of those nice transistors, and I thought, those Toshibas are pretty dang tough. So I followed the um, input to the, okay, transformer input, power uh, mains input, and this is be your headphone amp and uh, switching, you know, on and off switch. Then here, of course, is your power supply. And there's your power amp, and this is for the uh, digital digital uh, what's it called, uh, the uh, remote control stuff. So you kind of pretty pretty simple here. You know, pretty big transformer. I showed you all this before. Um, anyway, I just did kind of a crappy job. Put a new power cord on it. Someone had cut it off. So I got that off a TV or something. And uh, you can reuse those grommets there. And uh, so I actually did solder that together. Then wire nut the hell out of it and tape it. So um, what I did was I traced the input lines, which is, um, here, here's the preamp right here, which is, Kind of strange. The preamp has got Toshiba chips on it. Um, a million little driver transistors and little caps. Oh gosh, I'm gonna ruin this thing. Um, this is the this is the preamp here. And I'm probably better with this stuff than anything else. I I can get this thing running. So there's a Toshiba chip and there's a sharp and. There's another sharp. Those are the drivers, I guess, for the uh, LED uh, display. And then uh, this is going to be the driver for the uh, tone base, you know, stuff. And then over here is going to be your A and B circuit um, controller. And this is the balance here. I, I mean, I see a ton of little transistors. I could have fried. What I did was when I fried this thing. All I did was unplug, and I've done this a thousand other times. Okay, there, there's your, um, you got an output, an audio out, you know, left and right. Um, little, little tiny signal that goes to be amp. Well, it's not that small. It's, you know, you can hear it through headphones, but, and it goes into the power amp. So I was just doing some experiments the other day, and I unplugged this, which as you can see is the left and the right. And then I'm not sure exactly what these other ones are. I could find out. I don't have a schematic for these or anything, but oh, power supply, right? Um, yeah, that, that's going to be power to feed this. Okay, that's what those other ones are. Probably 5 volt and 12 volt. Anyway, I unplugged that and then I smelled something burning. Immediately turned it off and plugged that back in. And now I have distorted sound in, in both channels. Um, so I got to thinking, uh, I was like, well, what, what, what can we do super easy here? And um, if I were to run a signal straight into this, it'd be <clears throat> extremely loud. This thing I think is rated, well, it says, uh, let's find out here. Oh, hell, I don't know. It's somewhere on here. Um, it, it's the it's the bigger one. It's the CA875. Um, it was on the display, man. Oh, well, I'll have to post it on the thing or something. Anyway, it was supposed to... Well, let's look at that. It's going to aggravate me. It was pretty hefty because there's several of these models, but this was the biggest number, and I couldn't even find one like this, so this must be... Consumption's 550 watts. Uh, you know, so even if it's not that uh, efficient, it's still going to have some output on it. Um, of course, it's not going to say over here anywhere because I'm looking. It doesn't say... And, um, of course not. Of course not. It's got a pretty nice uh, DC circuit in it for the speakers and stuff. But anyway, what I did was I ran, um, I ran a signal in. I tur turned my iPhone down real low, the headphone jack out level, so I could run it into here because there's no volume control if you run just into the power amp. So I ran into the power amp, turned that thing way down, put some gator clipped on some RCAs, and uh, use my test speakers here because I don't want to blow up any of my Wharfdales or JBLs. And I got perfect sound. I mean, it sounds just as clear as can be. And I crank it up and crank those little speakers there. Little 
So I don't know, man. It's it's got it's got then that, that tells me it's definitely on this preamp board, which is gonna have to be the most complicated. Well, no, this board over here is more complicated. Um, it's the uh, you can the whole setup controls through this if you have, you know, the the controller boards. This is probably a much more complicated deal. I, I screw that thing. I don't even care. But uh, I do like using this thing as a power amp. I mean. It sounded pretty clean, you know. It sucks. So I've got to go through this dang thing. I'm sure what happened was when I took that thing loose, this board was not set up for where it could handle an open, where it could handle not being hooked up like a lot of the stuff used to be, early transistor stuff. If you un unplug the speakers while the thing is on, it fried the transistors in it or the capacitors, whatever, however it was coupled. But So I'm going to have to go through this board, and this is something that I don't like doing and testing transistors and i don't i can't even tell on these numbers i don't have any books npn pnp i have no earthly idea on these little guys and i'm sure that's what i did if i didn't burn one of those big chips i mean it acts exactly the same as it did before except i have distorted sound so if i didn't burn one of these chips i've fried one of these little driver transistors that's exactly what i've done well i'm not really drivers because the driver the drivers are on here but when I run in my signal into there, it's, it, it utilizes all of this stuff here. So, crap. Son of a bitch, man. I don't know, maybe a Speaker Freak or Mr. RF Burns or somebody will give me some ideas. Maybe, um, crap, man. I don't see anything burned. I smelled something burned. I don't see anything black. It's got to be on this board here, though. You know, this is all this is is the preamp and the controller for the power amp. Could I have burned one of those little caps there? I've got plenty of those. I don't know, man. I don't see anything black. Everything's bent over because it has to fit behind the plate. So, but I I, I can count two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I mean, little baby transistors, and I'm not good at desoldering and checking those. I got some over here. Let's see. Um, I mean, I got you know. I mean, I, I've got. Crap. And I got a bunch of capacitors too. Um, you know, just doing things that. You know, anyway, I, I could. I don't know. I don't know where to start. I mean, I, I really, really don't know where to start. I think it's time to put that up for a while, take a break, and work on the baby CRT here for a while. All right, guys. Sorry about this mess here. I'm not sorry. If you don't like it, you don't have to watch it. <laughs> anyway, if you have any ideas about this damn thing, let me know. And uh, the power amp and everything else works great. All of the lights, the indicators, everything is perfect. And that's why I don't know. I, I fried, you know, one little part on each channel. I thought maybe a resistor burned or something, but it couldn't handle the open. And uh, the power amp is solid. It's got those nice. You can look at the other video and see that those nice Toshibas in there that are. That it's got in it. The, the ones, the same ones that Har Harman Kardon come with, you know, back in the 80s and late 70s. Because I looked the numbers up and Max Arcade's stuff he was fixing had the same transistors. So this thing has some good parts and some bad parts. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. More videos come soon. Later.